Hey, I'm Larry Koble from Brew and & Grow, and I'm here to talk to you about Introduction to Home Brewing. In order to get started, you need to do three things. One, organize your equipment. Two, organize your ingredients. Three, read your instructions. Okay, once you've read your instructions completely, what you want to do is get some water hot and quickly. We've got a 20 quart pot here and you're going to get about half of your total volume ready to go. Today we're doing five gallons, so you want about half of that ready to go. Now that we've got our water heated up to between 150 and 165 degrees, we need to get our grains in there for steeping. Basically what we're going to do is make a tea. Take your grains here, put it in a bag, and let it steep for about 20 to 30 minutes. All right, now after we've been steeping our grain for 20 to 30 minutes, we want to remove our grain bag and our water is now wort and it's ready for our extract. What I'm gonna do is take this, put it back on the burner, but I am not going to turn on the heat yet because I do not want the extract getting stuck to the bottom and cause any scorching. All right, now what you want to do basically get as much of this out as you can. So what you'll need to do, grab a spoon, scrape as much of this out as possible because you want all that good fermentable uh, extract in here so you hit your target alcohol by volume range. All right, now that our wort is at a boil, we need to add our hops. We're gonna boil for 60 minutes, and we're gonna have our first edition of bittering hops here. These are Cascades. Okay, so we're ready to add our hops. I like to use a hop sack, simply because it keeps a lot of debris out of the, out of the kettle, and also the boiling action basically will push the hops out against the rim of the, of the kettle, and if your hops are on the rim of the kettle, eh, that doesn't help get them into the boil. So I like to use a hot bag and put them in. All right, now I'm gonna get my aroma hops ready to go. In they go. All right, we've allowed our bittering hops to boil for 55 minutes. We've just added in our aroma hops and we're gonna allow them to boil for five minutes, then we will terminate the boil. Typical boil time is 60 to 90 minutes, depending upon the style. Let's say a Munich Hellas, you may boil for 75 to 90 minutes, whereas a pale ale like we did today it's typical 60 minutes. Now that we've finished boiling, we need to chill our work down as fast as possible to 70 degrees. The reason is, is you want to prevent bacterial infection, uh, create clear beer, and better tasting beer. So I've got a couple different options to do. The first one is an ice bath. I've got a 15 gallon pot here that I filled up with ice and water. And so what I want to do is take my pot and place it inside the ice bath and let it sit for about 15, 20, 30 minutes depending on how long it takes to get it to chill down. Option number two is to use something called a wort chiller. In this case, it's a coil of copper wire that you connect to your faucet and you run cold water through the uh, coil and what it does is it absorbs the heat in the, in the wort and sends it out into your drain. Meanwhile, leaving behind cooled down wort. The third option is to basically do a combination of your copper work chiller and your ice bath. If you are in warm climates, this comes in very handy. If you just want to be chilled down really fast, this is the way to do it. Now that our wort has cooled down to 70 degrees, we need to get it into our already sanitized fermenter very important to pay attention to your cleanliness and sanitation at this point in order to make your beer after it gets done fermenting taste really good. So what we need to do is take our what we just did in our half boil which is we boiled half of our volume with all of our ingredients and pour it into our fermenter. Following that we will top up our fermenter up to the five gallon mark with pre-boiled and chilled water. But first I want to reiterate just to make sure I make this clear. Anything that's gonna to touch your beer after it's dropped below 189 degrees needs to be thoroughly cleaned and sanitized. Now our vessel here that is our fermenter has been done so. So 
What we need to do next is make sure that we have hit our numbers uh, as far as gravity reading. So we're gonna go ahead and take that now. Gravity reading is ba basically figuring out how much suspended sugar you have in your wort. So what we do is we have ourselves a test jar. Inside of the test jar, I have a hydrometer, which allows us to figure out what our gravity is of our wort. Basically, gravity tells you how much sugars are suspended in your liquid. For water, the gravity is 1.000. For the, this wort, we're looking for between 1048 and 1052. So let's go ahead and take a gravity reading. We're gonna take a sample with our thief here, which allows us to steal a little bit of our work from our fermenter. See the nice color there? And start placing it into our test jar. And at this point, we are at, if I can see it, 1048, we're right there. Now that we've taken our test reading, what we need to do is pitch our yeast. Basically, we have, this is an ale, and what this yeast likes to do is ferment between 64 and 72 degrees, or room temperature. So, what we need to do is cut it open, and sprinkle it on top. So now we have the yeast in there, you don't want to stir it, you just want to let it settle itself in. The yeast knows what it needs to do. All right, now that we have our yeast in here, we need to seal our fermenter. So I've got my sanitized lid, and we're gonna go ahead and put that on here. I've got a little sanitizer in my airlock. The airlock will allow the CO2 to escape without allowing air to come back into your fermenter. So we'll go ahead and seal that. All right, now you make sure you have a nice tight seal. You're gonna take your fermenter, put it off in a nice quiet place, let the yeast do its thing, and in about seven to 10 days, you will have beer.